Hi, beautiful souls. This is Sadhana. Welcome to my channel. Following the video I did the other day of the first impressions of the other Kin Tarot, Ciela Thompson's latest deck, I decided that I really wanted to do a side by side with the Line Strider just to get a feel for the difference between the two decks, the difference in energy, the colors, if there's any significant um, symbology difference, things like that. So let's have a look at the 78 cards and I'll try to keep my comments to a minimum, but there's a few things that I'm sure I'm going to want to point out. So let's start with the Fool and obviously he's going in different directions and I really get a different sense of age. This fool is quite a bit older than this fool, but both of them have this lovely step, this lovely, uh, beautiful lightness to their step and the sense of playfulness. And we see the, the movement here with the petals falling off the flower this way. And here we have who knows what <laughs> coming up behind the fool in the other kin. We have a bird in the lion strider and the traditional dog in the other kin. And then with the magician, a little more traditional symbolism here we because we have all of the elemental objects represented and uh, not so clearly in the um, in the newer magician and then with the high priestess I always thought this high priestess looked very very young um, may just be my perception beautiful card both of them we get a real sense of the watery uh, intuitive energy that is part of the high priestess and her her teachings her metaphors and then with the empress so they're both looking in the same direction interestingly enough we have the monkey and the tiger and I believe she says in her guidebook this is to represent the strength the ferocity the ferocity of the queen or the potential of that and also the playfulness um, the open breast to show the sexuality, the sexual energy, as well as the nurturing energy. The monkey looking lovely at this empress and then the baby cub at the, at the bear empress. And then we have two really strong emperor cards. We see the more traditional color here with the reds. And then we have this, I really like this emperor card maybe thistles i'm not sure what the flower was intended to be but this is one of my favorite cards in the other kin and then with the hero font the hero font we have um one of the things i noticed was that the benediction gesture i called it prana mudra in the walkthrough it's very similar to prana mudra and i tried to trace a line of history with this gesture but i'm I kind of fell short and in we have a right hand gesture here and a left hand gesture here so I don't know if that is intentional or not the font is really similar a little bigger on this deck than this deck I love all the extras she added in this deck like the books and the symbols are this is very really uh, kind of opposite lovers cards. So we have a really kind of fiery energy here with just with the colors. Um, the two animals are wrapped around each other, similar in both decks. But here we have lunar energy, which is kind of cool. So one deck is kind of going in one direction and the other in another. And let's see if we can, if that theme kind of carries through. And with the chariot card, I think it does show balance with the two colors, the the blue and the, the fiery colors and the watery colors. There's a definite flowiness to this. And not so much that she's controlling the card, but she's she's guiding them intuitively. And she's like very much one with their movement. And the horses in this one are not reined. Um, again, working together to move forward to the next step. Here we have the trad traditional woman and lion. And this is a goose, not a swan, according to the guidebook. And the lion loosely reined. Both really beautiful strength cards. And the arrows here, 
seemed to have missed the lion. And I was just trying to figure out what that meant, you know, that the lions were here. They had, sorry, not the lions, the arrows were here. They had not caused injury. Um, there's some kind of sense of impenetrable strength of the two of them together. And of course the arrows could not, you know, pierce their force field. She refers to the bear being um, injured and that the symbol of the healing is all of this growth coming off the bear's back. And I see a skull here. I don't know if that is intentional. Um, the lanterns are quite different. Huge lantern here. We have the moon and we have more orangey colors here. right? Fire, more water. With the, yeah, the, the wheels are quite similar. As far as the symbols contained on the card, both have birds. This one, the birds are on the opposite side. This one, they're, they're framed together. The wheels are not my favorite card in either deck I really like it when the wheel is um, has a little something extra to kind of show the adversity of being at the bottom as opposed to the top so as I mentioned this one the scales are not in balance and here in this one they are so we have the 11 here this is the only card as far as I know that has the Roman numeral on it in either deck and we have the traditional sword and her eyes are, they look open, but she has an inward gaze, like an inward knowing kind of energy. And the sword may be here in the background. Actually, it is. There is the tip of the sword. So the sword is in this deck as well, too. And I like that the deck, sorry, that the scales are out of balance because that brings in a whole other element to discuss in the reading two really uh, kind of ferocious hanged men, hanged animals. Here we have the um, big bad wolf and the blue tiger. She talks about the blue representing winter and there's a sense of isolation. What also I thought of was the, like the blue Vishnu, the blue, all of the deities that have the blue in the Hindu pantheon that have the blue coloring representing uh, taking on others poison, taking on others disease, others karma and processing it. Um, I don't know if you would ever go there with the hanged man, but that was just something that crossed my mind when I was contemplating the, the blue tiger. I really like the new, the new death card. Um, there's a real sense of um, peace um, there's a definite ending, but there's a moving on and something really interesting. So in this one, I, I never really could figure out about the upward facing triangle. So the symbol for water and here we have the moon. I don't think she addresses it in either guidebook about the lunar energy with the death card, but it is represented in both decks. So temperance. Both creatures have wings. One is um, a mer creature with wings, and then the other has a human feet. And I missed this before, so we have the fire symbol on the chest in both of them. And then we have water and water. But we also have the balance of air and water and air and fire. So, yeah. The devil cards are quite different. So here, this um, the woman, the how the half woman, half goat, right? It's, it's kind of all intertwined. It's not really clear where the devil begins and where the woman begins and ends. It's all kind of intertwined and wrapped around, much like. The traditional symbology where the man and the woman are bound. Real sense of kind of um, 
dark magic in this one too with the inverted pentagram. I love the new tower card. Just the the strength of the force of the energy. We've got the fire, the water, and the lightning. So, you know, the sense of the uh, transformation coming from multiple sources. And as I mentioned before, I see a moon here. I see like, you know, a, uh, like in a children's book, the nose of the moon and the eye of the moon. I have no idea if that was intended for the tidal wave or the tsunami to look like that. And here we have, as far as I see, there's only one person falling here, as opposed to this deck where there's all these other people falling to the rock, the rock face below. This is a very Japanese uh, temple kind of picture. And this one is a lighthouse, I believe. And then the star card. Beautiful. I love the new star card. Similar body language in both of them. The moon cards are also very similar. And I love the sun card in the Lion Strider. It's one of my favorite cards in the deck. I just, you know, you could if you want it. I know I've seen other people do this with decks created by the same artist and that you would take your favorite card and then create a unique deck, um, choosing your favorite card from each deck. I probably won't do that, but um, definitely could do that because they are the same size. Of course, the card backs are different and you've got the different coloration in the background, but definitely possible. Both of these judgment cards have something really unique and special about them. And I love that the uh, Archangel has the mask, you know, so we know that this is about transformation. Something is being revealed, moving to a new step, a new stage. And here we have the egg with that same kind of energy. And I missed the, um, the horn, right? So this is definitely a, you know, a pronouncement of the, and I know this is typical symbology in um, Rider Waite Smith and other, other Rider Waite Smith clones, um, the an announcing of the, of the, the awakening. I really do love the colors on the new deck. And then the world card, neither of these really do much for me. If I'm perfectly honest. And then this Ace of Cups, I love, love, love. And there's a few things about a couple of the suits here. The, the mixing of the elements and why do we have the fire here in the suit of cups, the suit of cups. I don't usually associate with creation with the, um, with what is associated with fire. And so I really think that this is going to depend on the other cards that are around, whether you bring in and mention the color orange, like why is there a splash of orange? I love that there's a circle here. And you've got other symbols here, right? This really does look like the, um, possibly the grail cup, like a, a cup you would have in church for communion. And then the two of cups. And in this deck, I believe we've got a cup on every card. Oh, here we have the hummingbirds as well over the heads of the cats. And here we just have the fish orange fish at that too, right? So more fiery energy. Yeah. And we do have cups kind of hidden within here. The idea of the, um, association with celebration with the party hats and we have friends among different species of animals. That's really cool. And in this deck, we have one species of animal in a flowy circle of energy. For the four, so the idea with this one, I believe she has the pentacle, not the pentacles, the tentacles curled in. So that is representing the kind of the withdrawal, the sense of withdrawal from, from anything. But there's a lotus overhead here. 
So we know that the potential is there to move out of this um, mood. Five of Cups. So in both of them, we have eggs. We have three broken eggs in this one and two broken eggs in that one. Um, so here the owl has the kind of, is kind of turning away from the two uh, whole eggs, which is quite, I think, a normal gesture for, a common gesture for this card. And here she is facing toward the three whole eggs, which is kind of the opposite of what you would expect in this card. So, you know, it's, it's nice to have a different uh, perspective for the five of cups. I really do like both of these ones. And the loving, loving gesture here is beautiful. Their tails are touching and just lots of love in this card. And for sure in this deck, I'm going to bring in lots of chakra associations because I think she consciously or unconscious, subconsciously has brought in the perfect colors in many of these decks. So the green for the, um, the healing aspect of the heart chakra. And then we have the seven. So here we have shattered glass. And here we have kind of a, I will say more traditional, not traditional with an octopus, but multiple objects in the uh, arms of the octopus. And this is a really kind of beautiful, I love this card, the idea of the shattered glass, the broken dreams, right? The broken, the, uh, the illusion, the idea has been shattered. So now what? Now where are we going to move to? And kind of a very uh, challenging color to work with, as opposed to the more lunar, uh, intuitive color here. Like this looks so much more dramatic than than the octopus. The other thing I mentioned the other day too was that when I was looking at this, it reminded me again of I'm a yoga teacher. I teach a lot of of the stories from yoga, and several of the goddesses are pictured with multiple tools, you know, in their many, many hands. And those tools are intended for um, cutting through, breaking down, understanding, you know, your true essence. So the each of the tools could be used at a different time to help better understand um, where it is you're at. And you know, we could do this, right? You have to make a decision, pick one, move on. Don't, you know, keep mulling about, you know, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Anyone is going to work. You just need to make a decision and move forward. And yeah, both of these are beautiful, moving in different directions. This um, is a uh, silky, I believe. And she intended it to be feminine energy, but I just really feel this is very, very, um, it feels very, very gender fluid. Like it could, it's not really, uh, it doesn't have to be a, a feminine energy. This one here is, I love that the, the character, the person is all wrapped up, heavily protected, like in the journey, moving away from what is being left behind, he or she, they are well, well equipped for the journey. You know, it's been a really well thought out decision. You are not alone, right? You have support and along the way you will find support and you will have things to share with others along the way. Very, very smug um, cat here. And I think she captures similar energy in both of these decks. So the, the cat ate the bird. Um, the bird was available for the cat. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a strong undercurrent of the negative aspects of the Nine of Cups in both of these cards. The, these bees no longer have this honey so what is abundant for one is definitely loss or scarcity for another. And then we have two amazing, beautiful Ten of Cups. 
love, love, love both of these. Okay, and then the first quartz. So the quartz uh, are, I think, almost all animals in this deck. We have a lot more humans. Do we have any humans? Yes, we do. We have some humans or mixed human creatures in this deck, more mythological kind of creatures, and we do have plenty of human um, court cards here. So the Page of Cups is not, as far as I know, well, there is a cup here that's kind of hidden, and her gaze is kind of, I'm not sure if it's focused on the cup or beyond the cup. And usually that's quite important to see where the page is, but we can't see where the page's focus is. She's moving away. This feels very, very playful. And there's multiple messages here. So which message are you going to pay attention to? And do we have the idea of messages here? Well, we have a rabbit who's often seen as a messenger. This feels almost very Four of Cups uh, to me, this page. And then the Knight. So we had a good laugh in the chat about Mushroom Head here. And whether this was uh, a jellyfish, whether this was just a form of helmet. And I believe in the guidebook, she describes it as a bubble. And I think the idea for me, this is with the suit of cups, is that we are in a very intuitive deck. So we don't need to see with our three-dimensional eyes. And here, the knight, very hard to pick this one out, but we do have the moon energy and we've got the fiery energy here, right? With these colors. So the knights are all the energy of fire. So that's clearly represented there. And we do have, um, so the horse, the fish, the moon and what looks like um, a wand as well in that one and then two amazing beautiful queens of cups kind of young I thought I think in this deck but um, I love them both and I like that she's used directionality in both decks so you can really um, take advantage of that the facing sorry this deck is kind of dirty I should have wiped it before I did this and then we have the King of Cups. So not fully revealing his face. And to me, his face looks a bit lion-esque, uh, leonine. leonine. Um, but the watery colors speak to of the suit, of course, and love, love the octopus with his starfish crown. And then for the wands, so we have different animals here. She uses the fox in the Lion Strider and a variation of the anteater here. And we have this cute little baby anteater here. So we have a clear symbol reminder of creation. And I think the creation is symbolized by the growth. It almost looks like a peacock, but I think it's just flowers all wrapped around the wand and the fox being a very fiery animal, magical, magical creature. And then we have a hare. We have the globe in both. In this one, he is looking, not focusing ahead, but looking to one side. Almost looks as though the decision has been made to move in this direction. Um, and yeah, so the frog, it almost looks as if there's movement, right? Because there's leaves coming off here. But generally, this is quite a static card and uh, one of indecision. One of the questions that came up in the chat when we were going through this deck is, why are there so many frogs in the suit of wands in the other kin? I did a little bit of research. The only thing that I can come up with is that the transformation from the tadpole to, sorry, I don't know all the different names of the frog, there's a lot of transformation that happens with this creature. And so the energy of wands is very transformative. So that's the only thing I could come up with. And then here we have the chameleon looking over in this direction. And then we have the, um, the stag stags moving, um, not in the same direction. You notice that their focus is in different directions, but this one definitely has his, eye on the prize. Love the binoculars on this one. And these two are quite similar. So the four of wands here is the 
typical structure is created by the plants. And then here we have the four wands here, but the structure is created by the two, the two bunnies or two hairs. So there really is a sense of um, marriage or family or community, you know, with this card. It feels very, very, very safe. Like, you know, that strong, strong foundation. Five of Wands. So we have the open mouth, you know, angry. There's also a, a bird involved. It looks like a hummingbird involved in the in the coral. And if you've seen hummingbirds fight, wow, they are ferocious. Tiny little things. Um, might not be a hummingbird. I saw the long beak, but now I don't see it. Anyway, we have a bird involved here. And then we have um, the frogs again. And this one, you know, they don't seem to be paying attention to each other. It's almost as if um, they're just being angry. They're just being argumentative because they like to be argumentative. They're not really listening to each other. No communication, just passion. And here they're like, full on with each other. It's funny what you see when you just really stop and have a close look. So we have the, the laurel wreath here and here. We have this, the, you know, positive sunny color. And here it's shown with the, the gesture, the body language of the statue. And then we go to the seven of wands and really kind of a different um, energy with these two decks, right? So I always think of this uh, card very much as a, um, you know, sometimes we, we do need to build a wall and we do need to defend ourselves for protection, for giving ourselves a little bit of space. And I really get this. Um, and there's just really a sense of strength here. This mountain goat is for sure able to defend itself against the other creatures. But here, I don't understand this um, facial expression. It confuses me. And so it would definitely, it's going to be affected by the cards that surround it in a reading. And then we have either a card of moving through things quickly or um, some kind of a message messenger card and then they were going in opposite directions so this would be great a uh, great card to have in a in a nine card reading you know you could just really use that to your advantage in the reading and we have you know similar typical um traditional images for the nine of wands in both decks i like both of them very much and 10. Even burdens can be carried by young people. Sometimes we forget that, that even young people carry way, way too much. And why do they carry it? Is it imposed? Is it, is it, is it self-imposed? Well, I mean, it's always self-imposed, but, um, but why? Why? And then we also need to look at the sense of the positive side of this card, right? A lot has been accomplished. And so if this is taken off, there can be really a sense of freedom and um, a lot has been, you know, created with in, in that suit. The pages, interesting, face the same direction. Here, she has a dragon and here there's a light bulb. And I don't get a sense of the youthfulness or the new beginnings here, but there's very, very strong fire energy. Particularly in the line strider. And then we have the knight. There's this kind of cool sub story going on here in the column with the, with the knight himself. Almost as if, could you imagine this, the remainder of this picture? Like, could you expand that to see the whole story? 
And here, this knight, like the Knight of Cups, has a flower on its head. And it's riding a fox, I believe. He or she is riding a fox. And love this kind of um, Oscar Wilde, no coward look to the Queen of Wands. And that the crown is, um, she's not attached to the crown. And in this deck, a lot of the crowns are not attached, which really appeals to me. And we've got lots of cool symbology here. She looks a little sad. I, I've always questioned her facial expression. Both of these king of wands are great. Definitely get the energy of the card across as do the Ace of Swords. No trouble in reading that card. And one of the things that um, is really cool is the color green here because the color of green goes to heart chakra, element of air, which sometimes is really hard to bring into the suit of swords because we get so focused on the challenge of the suit of swords. And, you know, we go to communication, we go to mind, and we forget that this, the element of air is the element of the heart. And that, I think, makes it so much easier to work with the Three of Swords, if you can remember that. These are both great. Very similar kind of energy. And Three of Swords. Neither of them. We do have piercings but no blood and that's fun that's sorry it's not funny it's not funny that the birds are um, dead or dying but uh, it was on Kelly one of Kelly Fitzgerald's live chats and it was um, one somebody commented about how many decks do you know that have no piercings and uh, I think that's the word she used so this deck both of these decks definitely do we have an owl and then I believe this is a lion. So they're very, very quiet in in contemplation. So um, not in a horizontal position in either of these, which is a you know a usual um, way that the Four of Swords is drawn. These are very much uh, look like you know hermit kind of cards in deep inner reflection a time of healing a time of solace after whatever happened in the three of swords and i love this five of swords because of the fiery energy and the, that you know really uh fighting cock energy per i just this is super she did a great great job with this and here, this is, I think this is a deep inner reflection of the consequences of choosing to fight. Even though you won, what was lost? Okay, very, very different um, perspective on the Five of Swords. Okay, so in the Six, moving away, this one moving toward... I think they're both fantastic. Love them. Seven. Cielo has, in both of these decks, a real sense of if there's a person involved in, as opposed to just an energy, there's a, a very much a nine of wands feel about both of these characters. And so, why, if it's deception, why? Why did, why was this choice made? I don't know, there's just, I think this Seven of Swords needs a little more contemplation than it's often given. And there's always you know, multiple sides to the situation. Here we have 
really interesting um, energy. So we have this very watery, I don't know if this is intended to be a cloud. Actually, I don't know if I've ever read this one in the guidebook. She refers, she talks about this loose knot and that this is completely self-imposed. Again, here we have something very, very loose on the bird's head. This could easily be, easily be removed. And the bird has a choice whether to eat or not to eat. And so this is, for me, always a card about get out of your, get out of your head, get into your heart, take off the blindfold, look into your own two eyes, look in the mirror. I really, I like both of these cards and I can easily work with either of them. The Ten of Swords and the Lion Strider always kind of bothered me. I just don't like all those swords in an animal, but we also have swords in a peacock in the other kin. And I've spoken several times um, in recent videos about the Ten of Swords and how I've kind of changed my the way I work with it. And then we have the pages. So love the facial expression on this page, right? The new thought, the new idea. And we have um, the mail, the letters in both of these. So for Ciolo, the pages definitely are about messages, or that is an option for all of the pages. I believe they all have letters in them in both decks. And then we have the Knight of Swords. And we have the sense of definitely of battle. We have the sense of blood. Very active knight here with a more aggressive bird. And the bird does have a harness on it, right? So then the knight is riding the bird. And this is the first knight that doesn't have a helmet on. Yeah, this horse really looks like it's been injured. And that may or may not play into a reading. And then the Queen of Swords, these are both great. <clears throat> confidence, right? Quiet confidence through experience. This is definitely a much higher pile. And the cardstock feels... Hmm. Maybe this is a little better cardstock and slightly more laminated too. King of Swords. I think they're both kind of meh. <laughs> Let's go on. So Ace of Pentacles. So now we have a fox. So in this, so our final suit, we have animals of the land as opposed to animals of the air. And there's, a, I believe, a few animals in this deck that um, I had a question about. But we're in the garden. There's definitely a sense of growth in both of these with all the flowers. And there's a real richness of color with the purple. And then we have two very um, active figures in both of these. So we at least I go to balance for all of the twos. That's part of the discussion. Um, and then the balance of the element of earth. For the three, I really like this one. Um, we have the beehive, but we're also kind of outside of the beehive here. We also have the, the um, energy of the flowers as well too. And this three of pentacles for me, is a little more challenging. Um, it does look, look like mentor disciple, but I like this one, right? There's a real working together um, in that one. Love this Four of Pentacles. The sense of stability is so there. And then we have, you know, the abundance of everything. Here we have way too many clothes. It's like she has everything she owns on her back and she's carrying everything. There's feels to me this is much more of a burden. It also looks like she is in movement. She's not um, trapped within her own space. So, you know, read into that what you will or you might see something completely different. And then the five... We do have the light in the background, perhaps in both. 
for the six, one of the things I noticed in this one is that, see in here the bird is looking at the face of the mouse. There is communication happening here, and also this bird is receiving what is being, you know, missed by the mouse. But here, it's kind of like, oh yeah, whatever. I'm just kind of giving you what you deserve. It's completely different um, for me, completely different take on that card. And then seven. I really like this one. I feel the energy of the card much more than in the, in the line strider. The quietness, the stillness. And then we have the eight. So usually this shows a sense of commitment, a sense of work, a sense of, um, yeah, and I don't really feel the sense of creation here. This feels very seven of pentacles or even nine of pentacles to me. So yeah, so that one for me doesn't really work. And both of these, you know, very typical nines nine of pentacles and then we have the ten so here we have kind of the whole family or the extended family there may be others in the background and here we have this does definitely looks like a baby fox but this looks like another species of animal and so we have a you know the extended family represented here as well too which I tend to, um, we have lunar energy. This one looks more bright in the daylight. So you could also speak to that. I know a lot of people use this card as kind of um, lineage and ancestry or, you know, deep connections. Page of Pentacles, so our last page. And there is a sense of, you know, getting dirty and playing in the earth and for me, a sense of being playful is more page of fire, page of wands, but there is with the page of pentacles, you know, that similar sense of willingness to try anything and to learn anything. And here, she seems very sophisticated to me for a page of pentacles. I really am preferring Ciolo's new deck on for many, many reasons. This um, I think the Emperor and this one are my favorite cards in this deck. And I love the perspective that the Knight is smaller than the Tortoise. And he has a, a helmet on. So three of the four Knights have helmets on. And in the Knights in the Line Strider, we're only seeing a part of a picture. And I think that's really kind of important to reflect on because why are we only seeing a part of the scene and what is the part that is not revealed and that can definitely be brought into a reading so let's just have a look at the queen and this our last two cards so there's the queen and the king in the other kin so they are looking at each other beautiful And then the queen and the king in the line strider are different species. And to me, it would be nice if the king and the queen were similar or same species. But here, like many, uh, oh, yes, sorry. Here, like in many of the cards in the other kin, the crown is floating above. And I like the way she's done that so that the animals are not actually wearing the crowns. So yeah, so there you go. We have the Line Strider and the other kin. What do you think? Which one do you prefer? Are you, um, do you use this deck a lot? I, when I first got this deck, I used it, oh my goodness, maybe six months straight. I found it very easy to read intuitively and I found that to have less in the paintings, you know, fewer things and lots of white space was really, really helpful. And it allowed me to, you know, bring forth whatever needed to come forth in the, in a reading. And this one I have not, um, I believe I did just a reading, a couple readings the other day. And so I will let you know how this one does, but I have a really, really good feeling about the other kin. So thanks for watching. I look forward to reading your comments. Stay well. Namaste.